All right, I'm going to pray, and by the time the prayer is done, we may be quiet. <laughs> God of light and love, shine upon us this Christmas Eve. You have appeared in the flesh to bring redemption to all, to make us known through the newborn child. And so tonight we sing a new song of justice, of love, of peace. We pray that you would let your love be born anew in our hearts this joyous afternoon. Amen. Well, greetings, good afternoon, and welcome to Bradley Hills Presbyterian Church. We are so delighted that you are here to help ring in this Christmas season and to celebrate Christ's birth uh, together as a family of faith here on Christmas Eve. Greet someone who is near to you and say, Welcome, it is wonderful to celebrate Christmas with you. Greet someone around you, it is wonderful. Drew, it is wonderful to celebrate. Daphne. If it's your first time here, we're so glad you've chosen Bradley Hills uh, to celebrate Christmas Eve. We invite you to take home one of the red welcome guest packets or explore our website for more information on our ministries. But wherever you and your family are on your journey of life and faith, you have a place here at Bradley Hills. This is a service that is highly participatory. This is a service where you don't need to worry about being too loud. That, in fact, is encouraged during this service. And at a time when the lead-up to Christmas can be so stressful, we hope tonight we can all exhale and experience the joy and fun of the Christmas pageant that tells the story that we all have a role to participate in of God's love for us in Jesus Christ. Now, there are times in life and times during the service when it's important to be quiet and times when it's important to be loud. And so we're going to practice both of those. Let's practice being quiet, all right? Let's practice being quiet. Very good. Now let's practice being loud. And one way we do this is with these bells. Let's ring these bells. That is excellent. And we're going to ring these bells now as we share in our call to worship. We bring you good news of great joy for all the people. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
the, the wo- word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Alleluia, alleluia. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Glory to God. The highest heaven. On this day of carols and bells, we come, our glad songs joining with the choirs of the angels over us. Come, children of God, come and follow the star to Bethlehem. O come, let us adore him, Christ the newborn King. Alleluia. Let's keep ringing these bells for just a moment here. You know, bells in churches have important roles. They hail the ends of wars. They hail the call to worship. We talk about sleigh bells during Christmas. And so tonight, early and often, throughout this pageant, whenever you feel moved, feel free to ring your bells to God's glory. Let us sing. be seated. This afternoon, we invite each and every one of us to get swept into the story of Christ's birth. 
as each of us help it come alive for all of us on Christmas Eve. Instead of our just listening to or watching the story of Jesus' birth, we're going to try and get inside the story. For one of the most amazing things about the Christmas story is that it doesn't happen without people who are in the story. God doesn't just swoop in and make it all happen. Instead, God chooses to work through people, to invite regular folk like you and me to participate in the story of Christ's birth. That's the way it worked out 2,000 years ago, and that's the way it works out tonight. And that's where each of us come in. Everybody has the opportunity to be a part of this story we celebrate tonight. Our youth will lead us in reading the story from Scripture. Our children all play parts, as you will see, and then we will all become the story, as each character are invited to come forward or participate in our seats, come forward to the chancel as children come forward to help us and show the way to Bethlehem. And when we prompt you to say something, please join in saying the line together in unison, as is printed in your bulletin. And now, let us open our eyes and ears and hearts once again to the story of when Jesus Christ was born. In those days, a decree went from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was descended from the house and family of David, he want, went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the people were required to go to the town that they had been born in to be counted. For some people, that meant a long journey. Joseph, a carpenter, had to go all the way from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the city of David. He went with Mary, the woman he was planning to marry because she was expecting a child. They started on their long journey, traveling by day and sometimes even by night, their road lit only by the stars. Will you help me set the scene of this starlit night? Twinkle your hands like stars. Right. By holding your hands up like this, Show and twinkling them as Joseph and Mary make their way to Bethlehem. Joseph and Mary knew that it wasn't going to be easy, with Mary almost ready to have her baby, but they knew that with God nothing is impossible, and at least the twinkling stars made the road seem friendly.
Thank you for the stars. Now that Joseph and Mary are in Bethlehem, you can put your hands down. When Joseph and Mary got to Bethlehem, they wanted to rest. They wanted a room in the inn. They wanted a room in the inn. But sadly, there was no place for them in the inn. There was a stable where the animals rested. Mary and Joseph were allowed to rest there as well. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in, hands, in bands of cloth, and laid him in the manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. So do you know who else was in the manger with Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus? The animals were in the manger. Now we're going to practice making some animal sounds in order to accompany our animals when they come forward. Let's start by dividing uh, our congregation in some parts here. Why don't the people over here, why don't you be sheep and make a sheep sound? Let's practice that for a minute, all right? All this part of the name. Bah! All right. All right. Let's try. Let's try uh, a cow sound. What else is in a manger? A cow sound. What are cows? Moo! All right. What else is there? A horse. Horses are likely in manger. What do I say? Nay! Nay! All right. And what do we have for the balcony? Do we do elephants? Woo! Are there elephants? No elephants. Chickens? Er, er, er. Let's hear, let's hear a chicken sound or a rooster from the balcony. Er, er, er. Excellent. All right, let's hear our sheep. Ba. And our cows. Woo. And our horses. Let's hear the chickens and roosters. Er, 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 er. All right. Now, in just a moment, all animals, anyone who's dressed up as a donkey or a goat or a sheep or a cow, or any animal has a chance to come forward. And as you do that, we're going to mix this up, and we're going to have a chance for anyone to say either the sound you've practiced or the sound you've always wanted to make. All right? This is a very inclusive manger. So if you've always wanted to make that duckbill platypus sound in church, tonight is your night. All right? So now we're going to invite all the children to come forward, if you would. Invite all the children to come forward, and as they come forward, I'd like everyone to make your favorite sound. Let's, let's make the sound of a manger writ large.
animals are welcome. As you can tell, I am partial to the sheep, but all animals, all animals are great. So this stable where Mary, Joseph, and Jesus were staying was a home to some of the animals of the village. And these animals must have been pretty curious about what this baby was doing in their home. So it's likely that they would have gathered around Mary, Joseph, and Jesus for a closer look, just as you all are doing now, and just like you are here tonight, watching with excitement and wonder. And so we invite you, boys and girls, to stay up here on the chancel as we sing about the manger. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the God shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on this earth, peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. like to invite all the shepherds to come forward, if we could. Invite any shepherds to come and to sit on this side of the chancel here, if they would, like you are far out in the fields, away yet from baby Jesus. And as they do, animals, why don't you make your favorite sounds? All animals and sheep, make your favorite sounds. And you can sit down, all shepherds, you can sit down for now. Shepherds you, should, shepherds, you should go back a little and sit down. You guys, you guys can sh sit down for just a second, all right, as you make the sound. So all animals, I need your help to talk about the shepherds for a second, to help invite them in here, all right? Because I'm going to do a little song, and you can follow along to some of the hand motions. And some of you might have brought some stuffed animals up here, which are sometimes helpful, all right? So we sometimes hear about... David. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that's the city of David, and he's in the line of David, the line of David. Joseph and David are forebearers of Jesus. It's important that he's in the line of David. Now, what is so important about David, all right? David was a king chosen by God through the prophet Samuel. He loved being a shepherd. He was a shepherd like these shepherds here, all right? And he loved animals. He wanted to protect all the animals. 
In fact, the prophet Samuel, he was searching for someone who could be perching on the throne with faithful churching, someone steady, not just lurching. But the prophet was not looking for someone he could be booking to be king, whose staff was crooking, could not tell the plan God's cooking. All along, Samuel expected certain sons to be selected, but at last God interjected, said to Sam, you are corrected. For the one who will win the part may not be tall, tan, grown, or smart. For what God hopes sets us apart is what God sees inside our heart. So we're rolling with the roughies while we're taking on the toughies. We're flapping with the fluffies, just not stepping on the stuffies. Yes, we're rolling with the roughies while we're taking on the toughies. We're flapping with the fluffies, just not stepping on the stuffies. David grew up strong and brave, protecting sheep outside his cave. He fought wolves so he could save his fluffy flock so things looked great. He caught faith as a believer like an NFL receiver, took on lions and the bears, rescued fluffy sheep and hares. He heard his herd when they were huffy, sheared his sheep when they looked scruffy, pruned his pack so they looked puffy, fixed his flock so they felt fluffy. He loved lambs and woolly mammals, likely rode on humpy camels. He was clear not off the cuffy that he soon would save the stuffy. So we're rolling with the roughies while we're taking on the toughies. We're flapping with the fluffies, just not stepping on the stuffies. Yes, we're rolling with the roughies while we're taking on the toughies. We're flapping with the fluffies, just not stepping on the stuffies. As the youngest son of Jesse, David's path was kind of messy. Next to dowdy, dirty Bessie, woolly sheep look kind of messy. While David joined the shepherds, protecting sheep from wolves and leopards, with request his dad was peppered to let David join the emperor. But for Samuel went on a mission, held a spiritual audition, and Jesse's progenerition, they taught David's competition. God needed no permission, judge their spiritual condition, and God's latest acquisition was a shepherding musician who was rolling with the roughies while he's taking on the toughies. He's flapping with the fluffies, just not stepping on the stuffies. Yes, he's rolling with the roughies while he's taking on the toughies. He's flapping with the fluffies, just not stepping on the stuffies. Now in that country, there were shepherds watching over the sheep. The shepherds were sitting together and some were sleeping. When suddenly the sky was filled with light and an angel appeared and the shepherds were afraid. The angel said to the shepherds, do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news. This is happy news for all the people. Today in Bethlehem, God's son was born you can go and see him. He's wrapped up warm and snug and sleeping in a manger. Angels, you can now come forward as we sing and you can stand on the communion server benches.
Then, as you can see, many angels came from heaven. They praised God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, saying, and all of you can join with me in saying, Peace on earth, goodwill to all. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had learned and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. The shepherds decided to see the baby for themselves. We ask that the shepherds lean in here to take a look at the child here. The shepherds had hurried to Bethlehem. They found the stable and saw the new baby. They were amazed that it was all as the angels had told them. Mary never forgot that night, the night the shepherds came, and she thought of it often. And when the shepherds left, they began to spread the good news, and say it with me, that Christ the Lord is here. Part of the story. You may now go back to your parents for the rest of the service. And parents, you may come forward too if needed to help your children find their seats as we sing together. Tonight we sing of the wonders of God's love. And remember, it is Christ who is the light of the world, the light that shines in the darkness. And we sing the story of love's pure light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What has come into being through God was life, and the life was the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, 
and the darkness cannot put it out. The word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen its glory. God put a special star up in the sky when Jesus was born. But this was not an ordinary star. This was a wild star that went and danced across the night sky wherever it wanted to. Some wise persons that lived in the east saw this star, and they knew it was a sign. It meant that a great king had been born. These wise persons wanted to visit the king, so they followed the wild star for a long way.
The light of the star led the wise, pe- the wise persons to the place where baby Jesus was. They were overjoyed when they found him by following the light. They fell to their knees and worshipped Jesus. They presented him with presents of shimmering gold, sweet-smelling frankincense, and bitter myrrh. Gifts they had brought so far with so much love. In this same sense of awe and joy, we too bring our gifts to God in offering. We offer our gifts to the same God the wise persons worshipped, the God who came to us humble and small, a new kind of king who would not rule with force or mighty armies, but with love and self-sacrifice. Let us then offer our gifts and dedications as we are able this night. Please pray with me. Amazing God, on this night so long ago, you gathered a group of unlikely outsiders. Mary, Joseph, shepherds, animals, kings, and others to be part of a great miracle, the birth of Jesus, our Savior. Today you have sought us out and brought us to the manger. You have interrupted our routines with The good news, you have gathered this assortment of folk to become a holy people, a community of faith. May the good news of this night inspire us to tell the world of our great joy, for to us is born a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. 
receive these gifts of tenderness and love, of gratitude and praise, and use them for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, the child of Bethlehem, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Tis the night before Christmas, and all through the pews, good Christians have gathered for Jesus' good news. Our bells have been rung by each other with care to show that Christ's song sounds everywhere. 
You in holiday dress and we in our stoles have worshiped together to strengthen our souls. Our faith is part of Christ's story. God's spirit is near. And at last we can celebrate, for Christmas is here. So as we go back to our homes, thank our heavenly host. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Merry Christmas. And, and share with each other the joy of Christ. The joy of Christ be with you. Joy be with you, Zelmy. Joy. <laughs>